In this video, we're going to break down the difference between regular and activated B vitamins, why this difference matters, and when each type might be better for you. As you will see, even though everyone says so online, activated B vitamins aren't always better. Okay, so B vitamins are some of the most important nutrients in the body when it comes to energy production, brain function, and detoxification. They support methylation, phase one and phase two liver detox pathways, and they also act as cofactors for tons of enzyme reactions. But as you probably already know, not all B vitamins are created equal. Regular B vitamins are the basic unconverted forms of the vitamin, like folic acid for B9 or cyanocobalamin for B12. Once they're inside your body, your liver and other tissues will have to convert them into their active usable forms. This process requires enzymes, energy, and often other nutrients like magnesium or zinc to make all of that happen. Activated B vitamins, on the other hand, are the pre-converted bioavailable forms. Usually they're the versions that your body would make on its own if everything is working perfectly. Sometimes they can also be synthetically activated, like in the case of benfotamine and vitamin B1. They don't need to be processed much by your liver, so they can go straight to work in your cells. Here's an overview of all the B vitamins and their different forms, along with the conversion enzymes and cofactors. For vitamin B1, the normal form that you will find in supplements is thiamine hydrochloride, and activated forms could, for example, be thiamine pyrophosphate or benfotamine. For vitamin B2, the regular form would just be riboflavin, and then activated form would be riboflavin 5-phosphate. For vitamin B3, we have the regular form niacin and niacinamide, and then the activated forms NAD or NADP. Now, some people list niacinamide as the activated form of niacin, although it's not directly the same as the coenzymed NAD and NADP that niacin plays a crucial role in forming. But either notion is probably fine unless you're being extremely pedantic. In the case of vitamin B5, we have the normal pantothenic acid and in the activated form pantothene. For B6, we have pyridoxine hydrochloride and then the activated form P5P pyridoxal 5-phosphate. Now for vitamin B7, so biotin, regular and activated forms are the same. So you can just use normal biotin. And then for B9, this is a very controversial topic. We have folic acid, and then as the activated form, either folinic acid or 5-methyltetrahydrofolate, so 5-MTHF, or also called methylfolate. And for B12, we have the regular form cyanocobalamin. This is completely synthetic, or hydroxocobalamin, which is a natural form but still needs to be converted. And then the activated forms of methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin. I'm showing you this list because generally taking activated B vitamins is considered the higher quality route, especially if you're looking for potency. That's because, like I said before, they bypass the need for conversion, so your body doesn't have to do as much work. They also reduce the buildup of unused intermediates, and they support detoxification and energy production more directly. But that doesn't mean everyone should always take them. You see, just because activated B vitamins are more advanced, that doesn't mean they're always the best fit, especially for very sensitive people. Let's use the example of taking B vitamins for detoxification. If your detox pathways are sluggish and you're dealing with things like chronic fatigue syndrome, mold illness, Lyme disease, or autoimmune issues, then throwing a lot of activated B vitamins into the mix can be too much too soon. That's because they also bypass your body's ability to regulate, and that means they can trigger a strong response. Some people experience side effects like anxiety, insomnia, headaches, fatigue, and of course, detox symptoms. This doesn't mean that B vitamins are bad for you, it just means that your body wasn't ready for that level of stimulation. In such a case, a regular B vitamin supplement, even though it's less potent, will give your body more control. Your cells can convert what they need, when they need it, and it's a gentler approach. Like I said before, for sensitive people, this is a better alternative when they're starting out or when they're rebuilding from things like burnout or chronic illness. To give you a better sense of how strong these different forms are, 
Here's a general ranking of different types of B vitamin supplements. I will take B complexes because that will be easier than listing every single individual B vitamin. First, we have, of course, activated B vitamin complex. Like I said before, these are the most effective and fast acting. They are best for targeted support and advanced protocols, and they can cause problems in sensitive people. Just as a side note, I should say that I don't know of a single B complex that has all the activated forms. Usually B1 and B5 are added in their inactive forms, thiamine hydrochloride and pentothenic acid, because of price and stability. So even those that say they are completely activated usually only include B2, B6, B9, and B12 in their activated forms. In second place, we have regular B vitamin supplements. They have a moderate potency and allow for some self-regulation. And they're better for people who want to ease into things. In third place, we have plant-based B vitamin blends. So this could be, for example, a buckwheat complex or fermented B vitamins. They are even gentler on your system and can include other beneficial plant compounds. Then we have nutritional yeast, which is naturally rich in B vitamins, especially B1, B2, B3, and B6. And these are often fortified with synthetic B9 and B12. So in such case, you would want to go with the non-fortified version. Nutritional yeast is generally very well tolerated unless you are sensitive to yeast in general. And lastly, we have food, of course. This is the most natural and gentle form. It's always the foundation and starting point, but usually not enough if you want to increase your B vitamins for a specific protocol. So as you can see, choosing between regular and activated B vitamins really comes down to your goals and how your body responds. If you're looking for powerful energy, detox, or methylation support, and you know that you tolerate B vitamins very well, then activated forms are probably the way to go. This also applies to some special cases, for example, pyroluria, where people already have a hard time converting B6 into P5P and are therefore recommended to take P5P directly. But if you're sensitive, are just starting out, or working through chronic illness, then regular B vitamin supplements or even gentle plant-based blends could be a better fit. I definitely know that I didn't tolerate activated B vitamin supplements when I was starting out, even though everyone told me to use them. What I'm trying to say is that more isn't always better. Even with the good stuff, it's important to start low and then go slow before jumping into high-dose supplements.